Okay, so, a lot of times atheists will say to me, seemingly with a clear conscience, seemingly in good faith, the God you serve is immoral. The God of the Bible is immoral. I wouldn't serve him, even if he were God. I've even heard somebody say, I would punch him in the face, even if he were God. I wouldn't serve him. He's not good. He's mean, vindictive, immoral. So, let's examine Generally, when they bring this up, they are pointing to some scriptures in the Old Testament. For the most part, they are referring to scriptures in old, the Old Testament that seem to be, you know, vindictive or cruel. Now, keep in mind, I call myself a Christian, not an Old Testamentonian and not a Bibleonian. A Christian which means a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ. It is him who I say is God, and it is his example that I attempt to emulate in this world. So if you are saying the God of the Bible, for, from, for when you're talking to me, you mean Jesus. So let's look at what he teaches. And is it mean? Is it cruel? Is it immoral or vindictive? Well, let's have a look. Exhibit A. Let's go right to the first public utterances of Jesus Christ. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Now, this is the first time Jesus spoke publicly. So we got to assume that this is of paramount importance to the heart of God and to the ministry of Jesus Christ. This is the first things he ever said. Sermon on the Mount. Let's go look. First eight things that he decided to talk about. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, I like that right off the bat. I can get behind that 100%. That to me says that the, the, the humble, forgotten people, the gentle, humble, meek people who you see and you, and, and you, you love because they're, they're nice and they're, you know, humble and nurturing people, one day they're going to be running the show. You know, I hope that's true. I can get behind that 100%. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Now, that to me sounds completely and utterly right. I can give my heart to that God unreservedly. Remember, this is the first eight things he said, so these are paramount importance. So paramount importance to this person, to this God, is to be merciful. I can give my heart to that, that, that God unreservedly. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Again, these sound to me nothing but positive. This sounds to me nothing but positive, nothing but good, dare I say, holy and right and true. I can give my heart to this God and this person without reservation. And I can keep going. I can find 100 to 200 to 300 scriptures just off the top of my head that are, dare I say, inerrant, inerrant, Errant, without error, holy, right, true. Scriptures that if you followed unreservedly, that you could give yourself unreservedly with your whole heart, and if you followed unreservedly, you would become a much better person, much more compassionate, much more gentle, much more understanding. A much better person. And if you want to believe the entirety of the Bible, you would be guaranteed eternal life. What's the downside there? I don't know. So let's look at some of the scriptures that they talk about. Now, keep in mind, I am calling myself a Christian, which denotes a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. In light of that, every single sentence of the Old Testament, every single sentence is meant to be interpreted in the spirit and the intent of, of the New Testament, without exception. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Which means every single sentence in the Old Testament. Yes, it's the Bible. I am to read it and take it seriously and try and understand it in its context or what it means or what it's implying. But ultimately, it is meant to be interpreted inside the spirit of the intent, the spirit and the intent of the New Testament. That's the only way I'm to, I am to receive and understand it. So now let's take a look. We look at the scripture. If a man is picking up sticks on Sunday, kill him. Or something like that. 
you know, it's picking up sticks on a Sunday. It's certainly wrong. I'll think about it. I'll read it and go, it's the Bible. And I'll consider killing him, let's say, mostly as a deterrent. I mean, if I did kill him, you know, anybody else who was so inclined to pick up sticks on that Sunday would probably think twice before doing it. But ultimately, I would yield to the spirit and the intent of the New Testament. So I would consider following the letter of the law in that particular instance. Maybe for an instance. But ultimately, I would yield myself to the spirit and the intent of the New Testament, which said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And I would say, well, it's not that merciful to kill this guy for picking up sticks on a Sunday. Maybe I will let him live. Now, I'm being a little silly, but taking the Bible out of its context to try and condemn the character of Jesus Christ is a silly project. Nobody is teaching in any church across America, save for you know, Westboro Baptist, whatever those guys are doing, nobody is teaching these types of things, and the Bible doesn't say to teach it like that. The Bible teaches us, we the disciples of Jesus Christ, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they shall be called the sons of God. So I am to wake up I am to pray. I am to seek God's will for my life. Okay? And then the Bible says, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Now, I have found that to be 100% true and faithful.